Welcome everybody to the Hounds Tales podcast. On this episode, we are joined by Mr. Colby Taylor, the most recent champion from the Tar River Classic. We sit down and talk about how he was brought up in this sport, in this hound hunting heritage, and we go over the beginning part of the Tar River Classic weekend. Y'all sit down, strap on tight, and be sure to hit that like and subscribe button for me. Let's drop the gate. Let's get it going, guys. Welcome, everybody, to the Hound's Tales podcast. This is your home for field trialing and deer dog hunting. It'll be stories and discussions on the world of dog hunting. So let's drop the gate, cast your hounds, and get ready for another episode of the Hound's Tales podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take a second real quick and interrupt the show and talk about Cajun Lights. They have jumped on board to support the Hound's Tales podcast and the field trialing community. Uh, You got nighttime field trials coming up. I know I do in my series. Pleasure running at night. When you need to catch that next crossing, put your trust in Cajun Lights. Cajun Lights is made in America product out of North Carolina who has been in business for over 25 years. They make cap style and bucket hat headlamps to free up that extra hand for your voice recorder or for your GPS. There are three main lights I want to focus on real quick. The first is the Micro Gator, which is the lightweight option. It has four brightness levels and four color options, including red for us field trialers. Rated at 50 to 60 hours of battery life on the highest setting, this is your flood style lamp that'll do really good for us out in the fields in the short brush and be able to help us get in front of those crossings. Next up is the Cajun Bayou, which is the next step up, and it includes the same number of colors and brightness levels, but it packs a much bigger punch on that brightness level, so you can catch those crossings way down the path when you got a long road to cover. And last but not least is the top-level Cajun Blinder. It has a main beam light with four levels of brightness and includes a walking light, and even with a light this bright, the burn life on it is, is rated at five to six hours on the highest setting. There is no chance of missing a dog with a light like this one, folks. All their lights come with a two-year warranty and a lifetime labor warranty. And these guys are excited to get into our sport, ladies and gentlemen. So y'all be sure if you see me out of hunt, come ask me about them. I'll have one of each of these lights on hand to show you and let you put it on your head and kind of experience it. Show these guys some love, guys. And y'all please go visit their website at CajunLights.com. And their phone number is 888 888- Seven seven three three zero eight zero. Thank you, Cajun Lights, for all you do and for trying to get into this sport. Like I said, guys, let's show them some love. Let's get back to the show, guys. Here we go. Welcome, everybody, to the Harold's Tales podcast. Tonight, I am joined by a recent champion, Mr. Colby Taylor. How you doing tonight, buddy? I'm good, Mr. Hudson. How about yourself? Oh, we hanging in there, man. Hanging in there. Just put little man down and trying to trying to keep him happy. Mama's uh, upstairs making sure he doesn't start crying and, and raising all sorts of holy hell. So uh, <laughs> we're just rocking and rolling, man. I understand. I, like, I'm recording her here in the pickup so she, my wife can put my R's down and I'm watching through the window here and I can see him going one way and my lab going behind him. So... <laughs> I love it. You said uh, your little man's about one years old, right? Yep, he'll be one in a couple weeks. I love it. I love it. That's good stuff, man. That's it's it's crazy how fast they grow up, and you just don't even know where the time went. Blink your eye, and they gone. Just just like that. Just like that. Yep. So uh, let's kind of get into this thing, man. You know, kind of just you know, give us a little brief. You know, who you are. Tell us how long you've been a houndsman, and you know, kind of who who got you started in this stuff, man. Yep. Uh, so I'm Colby Taylor. Uh, I live right here in Dillwyn. It's Buckingham County, right in the middle of Virginia. Uh, call it this God's country up here. It's <laughs> dog, dog running heaven right here in, in Virginia. I can uh, vouch for that. Y'all got some perfect land for it up there, man. Oh, man. We got we got briar thickets. We got big rolling hills. We got oak timber. We got a little bit of everything. We just ain't got much flat country around here. Yeah, I'll say I think the only thing you're missing up there is swamps and flatlands. But other than that, man, yeah. you got it all. Yeah, we we got a few swamps. We found we found a good one coon hunting the other week. Uh, that, 
so we like to froze to death swimming but <laughs> i believe it i believe it you got coon dogs too then i don't have any myself i hunt with a few boys and uh they all got they got pretty good coon dogs i'll put it to you like this i'll go hunting with them anytime they want to hunt because they're not gonna walk me to death looking up for no coon they're gonna have a coon every time. <laughs> yeah, i get that that was my fall that was coon hunting i i, I went twice with some people and both times we slick tree and i said you know i'm not walking this far to go look at a damn tree i ain't doing it yeah no we i I got two or three dogs right here around the house i hunt with and the boys that own them and hunt them i mean they they ain't gonna keep no junk so like when that. they holler they go up there hunting on my wife's farm and her family farm i i know we're gonna have a good night most of the time i like it i like it so how long you been in this thing man how long you been a houndsman how well you know who, who kind of got you into this thing well, so I'll be 30 this year. So I ring, I've been a houndsman for 30 years. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, now, uh, it's kind of funny, you know, old Herman Burnley, he, he tells a joke a lot of times. There's boys that come up hunting and around hunting, and there's ones that was born with a dog food bowl in their hand. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I would say I'm one of them ones, you know, everybody in my family run dogs, own dogs. We all hunt dogs. So I've it. been around since I was a baby. That's I've uh, awesome. we got, my dad and them got pictures of me as a baby with with some of his fox dogs back in the day, and uh, it's funny to look back at them and what them dogs look like and how they were built and mm -hmm. now. Yep, that's a it's a vast difference, ain't it? Oh man, it's it is. Um, I will have to say now, like my daddy, the the style and look of dogs he used to hunt is a lot. It's kind of funny because I mean it's it's nothing. You know, my daddy don't even look at a dog now. He he ain't got nothing against it. He's just working and truck pulling. But right, right. My my style of dog is a lot of like what he liked back in the day. No kidding. And I guess that I mean, like I said, I got my start right there with him. And you know, it's it's funny looking back. It's like I said, some of them pictures and look at pictures of mine, and you can see a lot of similarities. Which my daddy, he's uh, he's always fooled with a little July in his dogs, and a lot of what I hunt has got a touch of July in them. Right, right, right. And I know my buddy Clint gives me hell catfish. He gets <laughs> hell about that all the time, but I'll never get a hundred percent away from them Julys. I like a little stupid than them sometimes. Yeah, I was gonna say that's. I had said Julys one time, but I'll never own another one again. Like you said, they got too much stupid in them for me. <laughs> I, I tell you, the ones we grew up deer hunting, they, yeah, they, they, they are. They were full hundred percent July. I mean, it was no, no getting around it. They, they was long haired, looked like old Collie yard dog. Right. And, uh, now them things you talking about outside dogs it was you never ran a gps collar on them no mm -hmm. matter where you turned them loose they knew where home was and you know you're in there running hunting you shoot the buck shoot the doe deer whatever you want to do when that when them dogs got to it it won't no touching them and reloading them you know all right let's run back to the club grab another group we go back hunting right when you go two three miles down the road and get back to the hunting club them dogs was right there waiting on you ah. they beat you back no kidding. They ain't home that good then. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, we've been out there years ago. Now, when we were, this was all, you know, beep, beep boxes, won't know GPS back mm -hmm. then. But we've been, we get up there in the state forest, up there in the Featherfin area, and, you know, trying to get some dogs up. And you'd see one of them dogs ain't had no collars on. And right. a lot of them we couldn't catch. I mean, they were crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, we, you know, we call somebody and say, hey, you know, such and such is up here. And they oh, don't worry about it. You know, we ride around till 10, 11 o'clock at night and then come on back to the hunting club to, to feed up and get ready for the next day. Them dogs be laid on the picnic table at the hunting club. Love it. Love it. They could be, they could beat you back from anywhere. That's the good old days, too, when you could tell somebody, hey, just leave them alone. They're going to go back home. Don't worry about them. Well, I've seen it before. I used to ride to some of them outside hunts with some of these older guys we hunted with. And uh, the good dog men, I mean, these, right. these guys were – they were hard on the dog. They were hard on, you know, that if they were going to feed it, it was going to be what they wanted them to do. Right. And, and they didn't like, you know, I said before, they don't cut you no slack. If, if you was eight year old kid and you got up there, well, that little dog right there is mine. Well, you better hope that one you claiming is yours can pull up. Cause they going to tell you about it. <laughs> right. you know, they, they didn't mean up no on by They just, they wanted, they were going to teach kids. If you showed interest in hunting and you showed interest in dogs, that's that's what they wanted if you was just out there and you, they could tell you didn't want to hunt they wouldn't pay you no mind you know you was just a kid but if you wanted to hunt 
they were going to make you into a little dog man real quick. That's right. That's right. I always say that the older generation, when they, when they are hard on you and they give you, give you hell and give you a hard time, that ain't because they're trying to be mean to you, but they, they that's because they care about you and want to see you improve on yourself and improve as a houndsman, as a person. Oh, for sure. You, you had to grow up with tough skin around them. And like I said, you know, I, I as a kid and as a teenager and a young adult, I used to get aggravated, frustrated with them and, and think they was, you know, trying to be hard on me or picking on me. Didn't want to see you succeed. And the older I got, I realized, like, you know, they they were trying to teach me the hard way, but they were teaching me the right way. Right. You know, it, it was no sugarcoating it. It was, hey, man, that dog ain't going to make the cut. Go on and cut ties with and find you know. Yep. Yep. Leave, leave, leave your heart at home and, and, and go ahead and just send them to somewhere he could be more useful. Oh yeah, cause I can promise you. I love it. We we put a whole lot of time, money, and effort to someone who's got a mind of his own. Well, it's kind of like you know we 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 spoke on a little bit earlier, you know that you know, and I I had a podcast I did it recorded Tuesday with some guys, and I and I feel like this is a lot that that leads into that. You know, I feel like Virginia is one of those slept on states as far as a good good houndsman and good good dogs like you see so many good dogs come out of this state and it's always it's never it, i feel like you know just listening to conversations you never hear virginia like in the mix of like the best dogs come from here the best houndsmen are from here but man we got some good stuff that comes out of virginia oh man it's it's a slew of them i mean it's i just i can name a few off the top of my head bruce Clavern, you know he got inducted into the hall of fame one of the greatest up right eddie act Eddie Atkins is going to be a Hall of Famer if he already isn't. Uh, Roy Neighbors, one of the best there's ever been. Mm-hmm. You got, like I said, you can't you can't get around him, but old Wiz, he's right here. <laughs> I, mean, he, I, I don't want to blow his head up too much because he gets enough compliments anyway. But I mean, he <laughs> puts right. he puts Virginia on the map year in and year out. You can't deny it, can't take it from him. I mean, that's it. Love, love him or hate him, he's one of the best that's ever done. That's it. That's it. And you know. They don't call them the you whiz look, for nothing. Yeah, exactly. And you, you look back at, you know, a lot of the old timers, you take Doug Borm and Doug's dead. They they won and placed in on many a hunts. Mm. Um there's there's a bunch of people and then, you know, you really get into the ones that, that nobody knows that were the houndsmen. Right. I mean, you take I grew up hunting around and, and hunted with a little bit. Right here in Buckingham County, he was a he was a, a fox hunt legend in Buckingham for sure. And if you travel around and talk to people, they knew him. Outside the county was Mr. Lewis Oliver. He uh he was a broke dog hunter, run fox dogs on outside, but he he was a legend in this county. I mean, he had some of the best outside fox dogs around. Uh, I was privileged as a young kid to hunt with him. Um, used to be Tower Hill years ago. Mm-hmm. Used to allow puppy running on monday mornings okay and a lot of people don't even know that or remember that a lot of that generation has died and gone on right right well my granddaddy ran every monday morning with mr lewis and i mean i spent a many a summer mornings on monday mornings right there sitting in a chair right before i mean that was when they were standing timber in tower hill but right right sitting there in a chair with listening to my granddaddy and mr lewis talk and you know I wish for I wish I could go back in time and remember everything they said, but you know I was six, eight, ten years old. Me and my little cousin Dylan, we was we won't we won't pay no whole lot of attention, but I think we learned what we could while we was there. That's right. <laughs> you inadvertently lo- you learned a lot of that. Absolutely, and it was. I mean that that's days you know you never get back. I I wish all the time Tower Hill had Monday morning puppy running. That was that Man. was some good time back then. I bet. I bet. And probably some of the craziest stories told in there, too. Oh, man. And Lewis, <laughs> his brother, Carol Lee, who uh, it's actually funny. The one gate at Tower Hill, when you're coming down Tower Hill Road right mm-hmm. there, the one gate on side of the road, that driveway straight across, that was Lewis's brother, Carol Lee. And to this day, we still call that crossing right there, Carol Lee's Gate. Okay. I got you. And you, it's funny. You, you ever see DJ Taylor? I asked him about it. He, uh, He's terrified of the dark, bless his heart. But <laughs> it, it, when when Tower Hill used to be standing timber, he wouldn't go nowhere in that pen without somebody. <laughs> right. <He had> definite. <laughs> and he, I don't know what it was one night. It was a light or something in the woods we seen, and he swore up and down and said, "Man, I thought that's Carol Lee coming to get me." Oh, I shit. said, "He wouldn't hurt you." <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, DJ, 
DJ's one of the only ones. Well, DJ, my daddy, and Earl, they all three of them, they scared to death of the dark. Ah, uh, no kidding. That's funny. I've never known fox hunters to be scared of the dog, but they are terrified, terrified of the dog. Terrified of it. Oh, Lord. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and all them, uh, a lot of them old timers, I mean, they they's the ones who taught me a whole lot coming up. And uh, Bert right there, like I said, my daddy, he messed with dogs when, when I was a baby and when I was younger. And then uh, Bert time middle school hit right there. I started, I told daddy I wanted to get back in dogs. And I was the only child then. And mom and daddy had split up. And, uh, you know, he said, all right, you want to mess with dogs? We'll do it. And he, we, we had a few dogs off and on. And, right. I mean, there for about six months and they, they place here and there they won't know they won't gonna be a barn burner but they get your name called right you know? right right so it went a little while and and daddy finally said you know he said i can't take this no more he's like we're we gonna have to get us something that that we can we can make a run at to win right and i you know at that time i was like oh yeah let's do it absolutely so you so you get it honestly then yeah yeah i can't you know <laughs> like i said i can't take it i i my old famous saying my wife loves to hear me say it. Well, she knows that's my saying. We we hate to lose more than we love to win. Love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that, they probably put that on my gravestone the day I die. <laughs> but no, he, uh, so old P. Garrett, you know, he called Daddy up one day. He said, I found you a dog you might want to go try. So we right. said, all right. And at the time, Mead and my daddy were hunting together all the time. And, uh, Mead's another one. He's one of them greats that I grew up, spent a many a long nights with and early morning rides and learned everything I could from him. Right. Mead, at one time when Mead was running old Swamper, I mean, that was the dog in the county to beat. Okay. Swamper was the man right here in them nighttime hunts. He, he won six bed of them and he, he was the man. No. But we, uh, you know, Mead, we'd run them hunts at Tire Hill down there and, and Mead would call Dead and say, hey, you know, if you want to put a couple of dogs in your name, you register them and, you know, run them under your name. If you place, Colby get the trophy. You know, he, he, Mead was just trying to look hurt for us at right, the time. Right, right, right. And uh, it was funny, Daddy and Mead and uh, Larry Tomlin and all them, they hunted together. And, and at one time, Mead, Larry, and Daddy, they ran under the beatdown brothers. I've heard, yep. I done heard that name a whole lot. Yep, they used to run under the beatdown brothers. And that was always a joke around here. And uh, that's another one, Larry Tomlin. Oh, yeah. I don't care what nobody ever says. He'll go down as a legend in my book. I learned a lot from that man. Yeah, yeah. He was out of it before I got into it, but all I ever heard, if you mention Larry Tomlin's name, it's it was if he showed up, it was who was fighting for second. I would love to see Larry get back in it. I, I've talked to him about it. I would love that, that man. He was a good hunter. He was he was a good dog man, and he I, he was a, he was just a great man. Yeah. Him and Mark together probably be dag- daggone tight. They'd be tough. Oh, Lord. Don't tell. Don't blow Mark. Yeah, head up. I can't. Yeah, I can't <laughs> blow Mark up like that. <laughs> no. Mark's my buddy. I thank the world of him too. Yeah, Mark's a good old. Mark's a good old boy. I, I like giving him hell every time I see him. Wait. Well, so back, uh, me called Daddy and he found a dog, and uh, it was funny. It's it's go show you how small of a world this is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a football game on Friday night. And Daddy told me, he said, I'm going to go get that dog. You know, I'm going to miss your football game. And I said, I don't care. I, I'll miss this football game. Don't bother me. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, so Daddy went over and picked the dog up. And I paid for it with my own money. Uh, uh, I think I give $250 for her. And that was, that was back cutting grass and doing stuff like that, saving up. I, I probably didn't have but about $200. Daddy had to fill the rest. That's right. But uh, he bought her from Les Roark okay. over in, in – through Burkeville, which is funny. He used to be him and CH Hall were partners. Okay. This was about the time CH was going out of it before he got back in it here now. Right. And uh he bought a little jip was off of Webb's Deuce. Mm-hmm. Well I say he did it, picked her up, I paid for it. it was off of Webb's Deuce and uh one of Eddie Atkins jips, Daisy. Okay. Um I've heard that got- Daisy name a whole lot too. She was a producer. Deuce yeah. was a producer. All, them dogs were producers. Right. And uh, anyway, the reason we got her is because at that time, Les and them, the H and them were, were pretty heavy three-day in, and this was before the GPS scholars had come out. Right. You, you you couldn't get this dog off the ground. She would run 14 hours, and it, pretty much if you're sitting there trying to catch her at the five-hour mark, she'd come out running the red. 
she'd go up the road a hundred yards, cut across, come back down, pick the track up, and never slack up. <laughs> Just to keep from getting caught. Oh man, she was she bless her heart. She was, and I mean she was a dog. She really was. Right. She was a good, clean running dog. Had a good mouth. She uh, it's kind of funny they used to pick on me about her. She had almost sounded like she was clucking when she would run. Oh uh, yeah, like, yeah. Click, click. And uh, she had a real good mouth. And I can remember we'd hunt her. You turn her loose at twelve o'clock at them midnight hunts, and you'd come back at three or four the next evening to catch her. <sighs> well, and no you catch just, her before that. No, I mean, 99% of the hunts we ran her in, we never even put a tracking collar on her because you, you, you just had to wait for her. And she, when she was done, she'd come right up to you like, okay, I'm done. I've had all I wanted. Man. But I, I placed that dog in a many a hunts. I placed her second twice, uh, placed her Hollywood second. I placed first time I ever set foot in Creedmoor Fox Pen. I didn't even have my driver's license. I placed her second down there. Man. Um, that's tough doing it in two different – that's two completely different kind of pens, too. It was. It was. That was back when Hollywood – man, a lot of people don't remember this either. But I can remember running Hollywood, the big pen, mm -hmm. when there was no cabin, no kennels, no fence. You just pulled into that wide open field. Man. And it, it was so thick in Hollywood. This is no joke. I have seen hunts where we cast 80, 90 dogs at nighttime. And it's when they're giving the awards away the next morning, three quarters of the field didn't have a number on them. <laughs> it, no, old man, old me, Garrett, he, he would say all the time, he said, I swear they didn't plant pines in here, they planted briars. <laughs> well, I'm glad, I'm sure as hell glad they got away from that. There was a thick hell hole. <clears throat> man, man, sound, and like, then, sound like Fat Rat's pen. Oh, yeah, it, it was burnt exactly like Fat Rat's was. Golly. But that little jip there, her name was Robin, um, placed her a lot. And, and while we had her, we ended up getting another dog, got her from Justin Scott. Now, this was my daddy's pride and joy. And mm -hmm. when this dog here died, I never seen my daddy really get attached to another one after this one. Right. But Justin had a jip back then. Her name was Beyonce. Mm -hmm. And uh, still to this day, I, I have yet to find one about like her she she was a freak of nature um my daddy won i shouldn't say my daddy I should say me but that was <laughs> at that time i had robin he had beyonce so uh, we were button all the time i got gotcha. you but i think my daddy won four five six hunts with her and the craziest thing about it she never ran a single hunt over three hours long no kidding she, you could put a stopwatch on her at three hours. She was done, and nothing wrong with her, nothing hurt. She'd come right up there and just sit there and look at you. Wow. She she won a hunt at Tower Hill, and uh, the guy from Buckingham here will tell you the story. He came in the cabin at 3.30 to enter halftime scores. Mm -hmm. When he opened the cabin door, she hopped up on the porch and went to go in, go in the door with him, and, you know, he, <laughs> he shushed her back out. And he, like he said, he just thought she was just checking in. And uh, anyway, he said at 5 o'clock when all the judges were bringing the scores in, she was laid right there on that front porch. And he, he thought to himself, well, she ain't going to do nothing. Entered the score. She won the hunt by 100 and some points. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that, that, she was an unreal dog. Uh, I've heard y'all telling stories and, and mentioning that dog's name quite a few times. Oh, man. She had a pretty – she had an old hooting mouth. That thing could scoot. You know, she – uh. We won, my daddy, I said, well, we won the, the Hollywood Hound of the Year with her. Um, that year, I think we finished, between my daddy and me and Nightmare, we finished like first through fourth in the Hound of the Year. Wow. I want to take a second and talk about Frontline Optics real quick, guys. They are a sunglasses company that is owned and operated by frontline workers, fire and emergency services guys. They have designed glasses with us in mind, with the frontline workers in mind, people that are out there using your sunglasses every day and don't want to break the bank and have a pair of sunglasses get broke and have to and just be out of that coming, I mean, that crazy amount of money. Guys, these are high quality polarized sunglasses that are durable, affordable, and ultimately represent our lifestyle. 
In addition to that, a portion of all proceeds from the sale of these glasses is donated to First Responders Children's Foundation. It is in support of those children who have lost a parent in the line of duty. How cool is that, guys? So, guys, check these guys out. Frontlineoptics.com. Go to their website. And when you go to check out, be sure to type in the promo code HOUNDSTALES. That's T-A-L-E-S. In the in, while you check out, and you'll receive 15% off your first purchase. Also, these guys have a first time replacement, no questions asked program. Be sure to check that out, guys. These guys are awesome. I can't thank them enough for jumping on board. And uh, we'll uh, get back to the show. And uh, the Beyonce wanted. It- she, she was a dog. Daddy got her from Justin one time. She come up there and quit on Justin. And I mean, Justin knew she'd do it, but yeah. I think it kind of embarrassed him a little bit or made him mad. I wouldn't say embarrassed him, just made him mad. And he gave her to dead him. <laughs> you know, Justin will tell you all the time that I was one of the biggest mistakes he ever made. <laughs> I was going to say, I, old Justin, poor Justin, I think he gives away more good dogs than he keeps. Man, but back then, he, he had a great dog, little girl. Yeah. That that was a freak of nature. She she didn't have a sign of paperwork on her, but she would wear a registered fox dog's tail out. Now, I now see a, that's I that right there. That gets my I get my rocks off on something like that. She, she was the real deal. I can remember. Uh, I ain't gonna embarrass Justin too much in this story. <laughs> right. He had a little uh, he had a little liquid encouragement one night, and I had to drive him back home from Hollywood the next right. morning. <laughs> right. And I'll never forget it when we, when he stumbled in the house and was going to live with his mom and them right there. Uh-huh. He said, uh, hey, will you want me to when we put the dogs in the kennels? He said, uh-uh, let them go. And I let little girl and them out in the yard. And when he opened the back door of the house, they went on up in there with him and slept with him in the living room. No kidding. Yep, them, them dogs, they were special dogs back then. I we never all would have guessed. Mm-hmm. Never would have guessed it. But, yeah, them, Robin and Beyonce was real good ones. And then, uh. My little cousin Dylan, he bought one called Adam. It was off an old hustler dog. Uh, he looked like a lab, man. That scanner had hair long as a collie. Ah. And uh, he was a big, strong, dark red male. He could run something. Uh, one of the first three days we ever went to in our life at Creedmoor again. Mm-hmm. I finished, well, I say I would, but we finished second speed and drive with him in the all age. And you, you'd have never known that that dog could just. You could run him three days right now and come home and cast him pleasure on it. He wow. he could do so dumb he could take it. Just had no gear. I mean, I mean, no no give up to him. Nope, he was a he was a man, you know. And it's it, it's funny you look back now at those dogs you had, and you know the old saying, "I wish I knew then what I knew now." Mm-hmm. But if I could have bred them dogs a little more, which we did get to breed Robin, and she th- she threw me some pretty good little dogs. Uh. Beyonce, I never got a litter out of her. We bred her two or three times. She never would take. Don't know what it was. Right. Um, and then Adam, we got a couple litters out of him, but just we was young. Me and me and Dylan, like I said, he's my first cousin, my best friend. You know, he's uh, he's my partner to the end on on anything we do. Right. But we was kids, so I didn't want to breed to his dog because I didn't want him to feel better than I was. So you, you know. <laughs> Old bull hit in the ring, guy. That's right. <laughs> that'll that'll beat the best of them, won't it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I love them, it. Uh, they were they were some good dogs, man, and they they kind of set the path for me, I guess I'd say. So when was that first uh, that first three day? You know, it sounded like y'all were you know growing up and coming up through it. You know, you did a lot of the one day stuff. When did y'all start getting into the three day world? Uh that would have been. I remember the three day that we placed Adam in. I want to say it was a Friday or a Saturday, Sunday, Monday hunt because I had to leave and go home for football practice on Monday. So I'm gonna say that was somewhere around 2009 or 10. Okay. Okay. Give or take. Yeah, because I know Dylan's daddy. <laughs> he, he went down there with us, and um, he had to bring me back home for football practice. I, I do remember that. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> yeah, and that made me mad because Dylan got to stay down there with my daddy, you know. Right, <laughs> right. We, Almost made you want to give up football, right? Oh, yeah, I would have gave that up at the drop of the hat anyway. Right. right. I was a I was a good football player, but I never cared nothing for it, you know. Yeah. I, just, 
I wanted to run dogs and and do that stuff. So. I'm I'm the same way, you know. I I got I I wasn't the greatest at basketball, but I made the basketball team one year, and about four or five weeks into it, when hunting season was hitting, and we were going, they were making mandatory Saturday practice. I said, the hell on this. Yeah, and that's I, right. I handed my jersey back in and went back to dog hunting. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I'm the same way. Yep. Yep. I tell my all the time, you know, the little boy there, I said, in some ways, I hope he don't ever pick a ball up. You know, I'll teach him how to, she works with him on the farm and stuff. So right. I, I just assume him work and hunt, he found me. That's it. That's it. I'm kind of, I'm hoping my boy, you know, I ain't going to deny him whatever he wants, but, you know, if he, if he wants to do nothing but field trial, I told my wife, I said, you better just hang on tight. <laughs> That's yep. all I can tell you. <laughs> you have a lot of alone time at the house. Yep. For sure. And, and like I said, when, when I was young right there hunting, you know, coming up, I didn't have a driver's license. I was right there getting him a driver's license. Uh, you know, I got fortunate. I hunted with a lot of good guys. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I hunted on many a nights, many a days with Steve Lawson, Fast Five. Oh, yeah. Uh, which a lot of people don't know this. And, I mean, Fast Five was started by my daddy and Steve. No kidding. You know, Steve had two boys bumped. And, um, dang, I can see his other son bright as that Trey. I don't know. I couldn't think of Trey's name. Anyway, <laughs> Trey oh, was Steve's boys. And then daddy and me, it was five of us. And that's where one night we was hanging out and just painting dogs, getting ready for a hunt in Hollywood. And Steve and daddy was like, we need to run under the same name, you know, try to bully up on some people. And that's when the fast five got started. No kidding. Yep. Did so I hunted them. That. Yep, I hunted a many a days with Steve and learned a lot from him. I I rode a many a miles. He used to have that extended cab uh, F three fifty diesel. That thing was jacked up forty inches in the air, but we <laughs> drove that thing everywhere. No, well, I hope you're ready to. Uh, I hope you're ready to to go against him at Tower Hill because uh, y'all y'all gonna be competing against each other down there. Oh yeah, if I beat him or he beats me, one of us gonna call the other and cuss the other one out and tell each other. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I love it. <laughs> I love it. So that leads me into you know into, into some of this uh, some of these other things I got to, wrote down to talk about. All right, what is TSW? All right, so TSW stood, stands for Taylor Shoemaker and Wood. Okay. Well, my first cousin Dylan, his uh, his mama, my daddy, they brothers and sisters. Uh, Dylan's last name is Wood. Uh, it's also with my daddy's logging and trucking company, T and W Trucking. That's what that stands for. Okay. Uh, the S is shoemaker. Uh, pretty much, if any, you know anybody in Buckingham, they tell you all the tailors and shoemakers are kin. Somehow or another, we all kin. I get it. <laughs> I get it. You know, at the time when we first started that, it was me, Dylan Wood, and Hunter Shoemaker. Mm-hmm. We all we hunted together. We run dogs together. We fished together. We went out to eat. I mean, we was we was best friends. Us three. It, it won't have birded maybe two or three days every week went by. One of us won't with each other. Or all three of us were together. Right. And uh, we just said one day, let's let's start running under something together. And uh, and I kind of I sent the name in the group message. I said, how about TSW? Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course, Dylan and Hunter was like, how about STW, WST? <laughs> right. How <laughs> about I'm the oldest and been doing it the longest, so we're going to go TS. <laughs> you, put some, <laughs> you put some authority down on them. That's right. And so we went to running under that and it kind of stuck, you know, and before that we were always who that. That's what I always ran under. Okay. You know, that's originally started as who that kennels. My daddy started that years back and, uh, the TSW run with it. We went with it and, uh, which I lead into that after this, but I had another, I got another cousin who's my biggest role model and my biggest influence in, in dog hunting is, uh, if you ever hear me make a comment about my cousin mailbox, Okay. Um, he's my daddy's first cousin and he was raised with my daddy and my aunt. So he's like their brother and that he's my greatest influence in the dog hunting world. Um, gotcha. so, you know, he, he, of course he liked the name cause then he said he could be a part of it. And, uh, right. you know, we run with the TSW for about a year there and, uh, Hunter, he kind of wanted to do his own thing. And he, he told me one day, he said, you know, man, I, I kind of want to make my own name, do my own thing. I said, yeah, I get that. You know? And he said, I, I, I don't, I feel bad. Sometimes I, I feel like you overshadow me. And I was like, man, I don't ever feel like that. You know, everything is me and you and Dylan. That, 
Right. I ain't above you, you know. But like I said, he wanted to do his own thing, and I don't blame him one bit. Yeah, you know, yeah, I can respect that. A lot of people ask me a lot of times, you know, is there any, you know, ill feeling between me and him? And it ain't not not on my end at all. You know, I I thank the world, the hunter, and he's. I tell anybody for his age, he was just a sharper dog man I'd ever been around. Right. And uh, I tell everybody a lot of times, that I, I miss hunting with him more than anything because yeah. we were. He looked at a dog a lot like I did, and it was nice having another set of eyes. And I, I do miss hunting with him and stuff like that. But, hey, it, when he wins a hunt, I'll call him up. Good job. Proud of you, man. Keep rolling. It right. ain't. I, I just soon see him win than I win. And, man, it, like you're talking, man, it's it's such a it's such a uh, an Easter egg to find something like that with, with somebody. Yep. When, they can, when you're looking at a dog and you all kind of see the same things and help level each other out on – on what you're looking at, you know, <clears throat> that's, that's oh, yeah. I'm sure that was kind of hard, you know, pretty hard to lose, you know, with him with the same it, thing. It, it was real nice, you know. I could send him somewhere with the dogs, or I'd go somewhere, and if he sent me a message that hey, you need to watch this dog doing this, I knew he won't lie to me, or I knew he won't wrong. He right. didn't seen what I. So it was, it was nice having that. Like I said, I, I do miss hunting with him, and uh, which I mean, we still talk now. I, I talk to him any, anytime I see him or text him, call him, shoot the breeze a little bit. Right. But uh, but now I was saying my other cousin mailbox. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. That that's about my biggest inspiration, and you know that's my role model in the dogs. He's he's like my second daddy anyway. He's he's my role model in in bird life as a whole. You know. Right. Uh, he he's a big used to be he's not no more but he used to be a big outside fox hunter he hunted with lewis oliver and slim and dwight christian and all the boys right here roger gibson yeah. all the local right, outside right. hunter right but mailbox taught me a lot of bird dogs you know he 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 taught me one thing that that i'll take with me to the end is uh he taught me how to listen to dogs more than watching dogs okay and I, i've always appreciated him like I, i'm i'm bright sharp about picking dogs out mm -hmm. with a mouth you know? i tell everybody a lot of times i'm not gonna keep a dog that i don't enjoy listening to run they okay. gotta have a good mouth it, it's something i pick out i love it i love it and uh you know mailbox grew up hunting on the earth side so he, he learned he, he told me how to listen for a dog when they picking up a race or when they didn't took the front end or when they on a check up or you know you and it, it's a lot to it. If you take somebody that takes the time and teaches you, you can learn a lot that if you were, I tell you like this, it helps me hunting at nighttime. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. I, I, I can sit there and I can listen to that pack coming, and, and, you know, you can hear that old chopping mouth dog bringing it through there, and then, you know, you get 100 yards from the road, and you hear that squealing mouth pick it off. Well, I know, okay, she picked it off right up there in the woods, but right. that one driving him, he was the one bringing it on through there That's too. That's it. That's it, you know, and that's, you know, I was kind of raised, my, my dad was real good at that on the outside, you know, he never competition hunted or nothing like that, but man, that was one of the things he taught me, you know, we, you know, growing up walking the woods and being in there with him, like you could really watch and listen at the same time. And then when you got away from him and out of sight, you're like, okay, well, I know it's that dog. And I, this is what he's doing by this kind of bark that he's going at. That's such a lost oh, art. For sure. For sure. It's, uh, that's what I see them, you know, on the Facebook discussions there, right much. They're talking about running dogs in the daylight versus running at night. You know, that daylight takes them ears out of the equation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't like that. I, I love to listen to a dog, you know. I got a certain mouth that I like to listen to. Uh, I love a clear tenor mouth dog, which I, they call it a clear tenor. I call it old hooting mouth, hooting you know, mouth. just sound like they're barking through the nose. That's what I've always liked. Interesting. And, uh, Huh. But it's like funny said, how everybody's got that, you know, that, that, that preference, you know, I was raised, oh, yeah. I was raised on like tree stock dogs and, you know, that running deer and stuff like that. So I'm a deep bark. I love a big old ball bark is what I call it. That's, that's the kind of Ooh. barking I like. I'm, I'm exact opposite. I, them, <laughs> big old, them big, heavy, drawled out mouths. I can't do much with it. <laughs> but it's like, you know, mailbox. He grew up hunting on the earth side, fox hunting. He likes the old squalling mouth dog. One sounds like, you know, I always make. I tell him it sounds like you stabbing him. Uh -huh. It sounds like you uh, tearing on that his tail. Feet. Yep.
I want to take a second and talk to y'all about Chestnut Mountain Feed Company in Concord, Virginia. They are my go-to feed supply store. And if y'all are in the area or are even close to the area, y'all be sure to check these guys out. It is where I solely get my dog food from, my leashes and collars and stuff like that. And they also have some farm supplies as well if you're into that kind of thing. So y'all be sure to check these guys out. And like I said, in Concord, Virginia, and let them know that you were sent there by the Hounds Tales podcast and give them they have my seal of approval because they are the best feed store around and um, they really truly are a blessing to have so all right guys let's get back to the episode but they like him ones that draw it out and holla and uh, get after him pretty good but i like that one that's you can just sit back and just as clear and pretty as can be and just hooting along. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Well, and I mean, you proved that this weekend with the, uh, with the best mouth, right? Man, that, and she's got it. That thing's got a clear, pretty hooting mouth. And I, I believe I was just as happy as her finally winning best mouth as I was winning the hunt. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll definitely get more into that here in just a little bit. I got to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to quiz you on two more things before we get there, you know, with, uh, oh. with, with certified stuppers. Oh, that's a million dollar question. I was going to say, what in the hell kind of name is that? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it's got, Funny. It's a, it was an old video went around a couple a few years back and uh, it was one of them old voiceover videos where they play a scene from some TV show and you know some guy edits it and, and changes the voices and stuff mm-hmm. and well anyway in the video the man made the comment that uh, he said he was a certified stuffer and we just thought that was the funniest thing ever and we were headed to a hunt at Creedmoor it was me me and Nightmare were riding together and. Uh, wc and aj were behind us uh-huh. and uh we went to go up in the bojangles right there outside of creedmoor in front of the little walmart right and, uh, right aj or justin or one, one of the two made a comment in the restaurant about a certified step and, and we all just busted out laughing i mean it's four o'clock in the morning everybody's looking up <laughs> right so one of us said let's run under that at this hunt just as a joke you know and uh so we did and I was second with Rooster at that hunt, and Justin placed one in the top five, and I placed uh, I placed a little Roxanne Jip I got, and I placed Sue. WC placed one or two, and AJ. Like, we placed six or seven dogs between us at that hunt. <laughs> well, you know, then the joke spread about the certified stuff. You know, everybody was like, what is that? What is that? And uh, I got the video somewhere on my phone. It's hilarious. I see you in person. I'll let you watch it. You're right, right. And uh, so we went to the next one day down at Creedmoor, and of course we go run under the same thing. And uh, I t- I won that hunt with first. I put him in two one days at Creedmoor back to back. He was second, then first. And uh, uh-huh. from then on, it just stuck. It it we can we can't get away from. Can't it. get away from it now. No, it's it. it's fun. Hey, I mean it works. It honestly works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if if you can look at it on a serious side and not laugh about it, it's actually a pretty cool name. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. We uh, it we get a lot of jokes about it. Uh, Mr. Doug Boehm, he asked me one time. He said, "What in the world does that even mean?" <laughs> I play him the video, and he just died laughing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So who all who all is part of that now? Oh man, it's be me and Justin, uh, WC, AJ, and I guess you know you throw in Dylan and Train, right. which is uh, WC Eddie and. Train, Train's the biggest supporter. I mean, he gets certified stuff with sticker on the side of his pickup. No kidding. <laughs> oh yeah, he, he's worldwide, but I tell you what, you know, I've never, t- I, I don't think I've ever met Train in person. And he hit me up on Facebook one day and said, you know, just call me real quick. Or it was right as I had posted yep. a series or something like that. And I think we talked on the phone for forty-five minutes. Oh man, when Train tells you to call him. He- and he'll tell you, call me when you get a minute. You better have a minute. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh. oh, I love train. I, I, I thank the world of him. He, I, uh, yep. I enjoyed, I enjoyed talking with him every now and then. I'll kind of hit him up every now and then. And, but I, I enjoy the hell out of talking to him. Train, train gives me hell all the time. Anytime we do good at a hunt, he'll call me or text me and WC in a group message and say, I'm glad y'all finally started listening to me. No, <laughs> so, I, I've learned a lot. 
I know he's all over the Facebook, you know, making sure he's commenting on everybody's stuff. Oh yeah, he keep he he's our social media press. That's that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's actually that's actually why he told me to call him. I forgot about that. It's actually a funny story. He um, Mark Wilkerson had um, mm-hmm. had uh, had offered to judge a hunt. And he had commented on the post or something like that for my series and stuff. And, and Train had commented on and said, you know, I hope you judge the dog correctly or something like that. And I didn't know. You know, I've never met Train. And I never met, you know, I was like, man, I was like, oh, shit. Like, man, that's not good. Maybe he's trying to warn me that this guy ain't on the up and up because I hadn't met. Oh, you know, no. I hadn't met Mark yet. So I messaged Train. I said, hey, what's this guy deal? And he's like, call me real quick. He's like, man, don't even worry about him. I love, man, I love me some Mark, Mark to death. He ain't ever going to oh, steer yeah. you wrong. Yep, him and him and Monk Monk go at it on there. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Monk Monk was judging down there with me at the Southeastern, and man, we 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 had a lot of good stories to tell down there. Oh yeah, Monk Monk's a good guy. I've judged the Creed more with him a handful of times. I like old Monk now. Yep, yeah, he's going. I can't remember. I think he's going to come judge pools in the series for me if I remember right. Okay, I got you. Yeah, that'd be a good one. So before we get into this weekend, uh, you know, I got you. I think probably everybody has seen it. I got you wrote down. I think I, I don't know if I sent you this in the list of topics earlier, uh, but uh, you're 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 going to be the master of hounds for my Hollywood hunt for this series. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm looking okay. forward to that, man. I think it's uh, uh, Hollywood is rocking right now, and uh, I think by the time that hunt comes around, it ought to it ought to be a hell of a show. Oh, yeah. I, I tell people a lot of times, Manny, if you look at it, a lot of the hunts at Hollywood, I judge them. And, mm-hmm. and from my driveway right here to the gates of Hollywood is 22 minutes. Right. Uh, and I run at Hollywood. I, I run there every other Sunday night. Um, and I love the pen. I've been – I ran the first field trial I was ever in that pen. No kidding. Yep. I, I was running the first field trial they ever had in that pen. And uh, I tell – I, I love judging there. It's it's nothing. I love running it. Don't get me wrong. I love to run the hunts there. But when if Chad hits me up, said, "Hey, will you help me judge? Will you master the two day? Will you do this?" It's a no brainer for me. Right. I just I know the pen. I can just about anywhere in the pen tell you if a pack of dogs coming. I can just about tell you where they're gonna cross that. Mm-hmm. It's not hard on me judging because I know the pen so well, and I've got my favorite spots to judge. Um, it's, I just I really enjoy the pen. I love that place. So it's never bothered me one bit when somebody. I mean, you take Nightmare and them are gonna have the Black Rock hunt, and uh, Carico hit me up said, "Hey, will you help me do the computer?" I was like, "Yeah, I'll do the computer for you." He, I said, uh, "You want me to judge too?" He's like, "You ain't got to do that." I said, "No, I mean, I want to." Right. I, I like that place. Yeah, yeah, I, and I I argue people up and down. I think that Hollywood's probably some of the hardest fox running around in my opinion and if no it's no that's a, i mean i don't mean no harm to nobody but that's a no-brainer for yeah. me yeah that I, that's just that's just a harder red fox running you're gonna experience now i mean i will say it's had a few rough years here since he's cut the wood but we still have good running in there and back when tower hill was standing timber that was that was heads up come get you some you know flying around red fox run mm-hmm. and it's getting back there. It is. It, it pen's getting back right. You know, I'd say this year we've had some of the better running we've had there in the last year. Yeah. Uh, that, place Creek is, is a great- that place is crazy too, man. It's like when 12 o'clock hits, it's like the foxes are like, all right, come on out. It's time to play. Oh, I, mean, I tell everybody all the time, the, the foxes play tag team. The ones that, you know, out there meandering in the day and stuff. When Bird Midnight hits, they go tag team with the other ones in the hole and say, "All right, y'all go have fun for a while." Right, right. You know, I mean, I, we we pleasure ran there a couple times there last year, and it was like if you went before you know eleven thirty, you were just kind of wasting your time. But once twelve o'clock yep. hit, you better hold on to your britches because that place is going to boil. Yep, and uh, I mean, I'd say Turpins Creek is another one. That's a, that's mm-hmm. a gut sling in right there. Uh, I put it to you like this: you'll you'll find Dirt in Turpins Creek if you got them in shape, and if yeah. not, it's gonna put them in shape. That freaking hill in the back end, my god! That that pen right there is like running in the mountains, and uh, they got plenty of game in it. Earl and them have done a great job with the pen, keeping it up. Um, 
I, I can't say nothing bad about Turpin's Creek. Um, I know Earl calls me about once every week or two. He, he's excited for that damn hunt we're putting on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's uh, I, He'll have it right. I give him credit. He'll have the pin right. He'll have the running. Um, the hardest part about Turpin's Creek, and anybody who runs there knows it, it's just so hard to watch your dogs because yep. that, that pin doesn't really have a – they're going to cross right here. It, right. I mean, they'll go anywhere in that pen. Yep. Yep. And it's uh it's hard for me to put eyes on my dogs in there and, and then the way the heels lay, you would swear up and down they want a dog running and then all of a sudden it sounds like a freight train's coming towards you. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Right. I, that's the one that I'm working the hardest on between there and, and, and Billy's, that's the two I'm working the hardest on is trying to get as many judges as I can for that for those two hunts. Yep. Yeah, I know that's you're gonna uh, need it. I've I've judged in there before and took off running full sprint and fell in a mud hole. I, Clint Thompson judged in there with me years ago. We had a benefit hunt for Dylan's daddy when he had cancer there, and uh, I Clint come up and judged with me one night. And Clint tells a story to this day. He said that's the darkest he's ever seen in his life. <laughs> and he took off full sprint and he ran right into the side of the buggy, and I mean. <laughs> He was no more good the rest of the night. <laughs> Poor old catfish. <laughs> I, I tell you, he, uh, I, I'm very, very thankful he came up and helped us judge that hunt, and which he knows that Clint's my best friend. We we do anything for each other, but he he tells the story. He said I ran running to the side by side, and he said, "I swear to goodness, the dogs were running a possum." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I think he just that that buggy knocked him out pretty good. He won't stay there. <laughs> then got him. Then got him all kinds of uh, messed up. Oh, for sure. I seen he was. He said he was gonna master a judge that hunt. I said I can't believe you gonna come back after that night. He said, Yeah, I'll come. <laughs> right, right. <clears throat> well, I think originally, if I yeah, originally it was supposed to be mules was supposed to be the master hounds for that hunt, and then he yeah, yeah he he said he wanted to do the Tower Hill hunt instead. So, I, oh, you know, mule. Yeah, mule mm. wants to pick wants to pick on me. That's what it is. <laughs> no, he, he, I was master and hit it with the one he wants to run, and he said he wants to master the one I want to run. So wow. we, we've been, we've been picking on each other the whole time. I love it. I love it. Ain't nothing like it though. Ain't nothing like no. it though. Well, good deal, man. I, I and like I said before, you know, I've told you a couple times. I definitely appreciate you uh, stepping up and mastering that hunt. It's something you didn't have to do, and I certainly appreciate it. For sure, no problem at all. <clears throat> so. Let's get into this weekend, man. Uh, you had uh, one of the weekends that you'll never forget. That's for damn sure. Oh, man. I've, I've told a million people it might not never have another one, but I'll never forget this one. I can promise you. That's it. That's it. So let's start. You know, we'll start with kind of the, uh, you know, not everybody's favorite subject, but, man, you, you hit a lick down there with it, too. You know, let's start with the bench show. You know, kind of tell us how that went and, and what all happened there. Yeah, she – um. I won the bench show with a little jip. Well, I shouldn't say a little jip. She's she's a great big female. She's good made, good good built, good looking. She's she's got it all going for her. Um I I ran her, she's the only dog I run in the Derby. She's really one of the only Derby dogs I got right now to mess with. Mm-hmm. And uh I, I told Clint <coughs> before I said, you know, if she puts up a good score and I get her through the first day, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a run at it to make a bench champion, and he was like, "Man, you think so?" I was like, "Yeah." And so I'd sent him some pictures of her standing on the table at the house when I blacked her out, and he was like, "Man," he said, "I ain't never seen her in person, but she is a good looking jip." Right. And uh, so casting them, and uh, I seen her look pretty good a couple times at the lower gate, and it, I mean, it's just me. It, it's everybody's got their own preference. Right. I will never argue with nobody, but. <laughs> Eat, like even if I take her to the next hunt, if she don't have a pretty good score or a potential place in score, I'm not gonna show her. Yeah. And yeah. Now I know in the, in the derby, it's not gonna really mess mess anything up in the hunt. But number one, that concrete at Creedmoor hurts my knees. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going up there and fighting them. And and you know, it's one thing when you show a dog that shows real easy, it's a lot easier on you. When you got one, you got to fight. It hurts. Right. And um. Uh, I, this she was the fifth bench champion I've made, but she's the first one I've ever owned. I no made kidding. four other, yeah, I made four other bench champions for other people. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. She's the first one I owned, and uh, we, we went to showing them there in the Derby female, and um, 
you know, he put me up first on the ground and uh, I think it was Trevor Mills come up there second and me and Trevor, we always bicker back and forth. He's one of my good buddies. And, right. uh, you know, of course we was button saying one was going to beat the other and right. just a little scatter. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, I won, the, won her class with her and uh, went on through the show there. And then I showed one in the all-age female for, for my buddy Colton. And uh, I got her up second. Well, then I got to thinking in my head. I said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be – I'm one of these dogs who I'm going to have to show against. Right. And so I was second with her, and, and Cliff Parker was first. And I was thinking in my head, I mean, Cliff's been doing this a long time. Cliff's been made a many events champions. You know, I need to try to beat him here. That way, then I got to show against Colton, and I think I can beat him. You know, you playing a lot of scenarios. Right, right, and, right. Yeah. And uh, anyway, the jip that was up third was Jip of Bobby and Booty and CH's Twilight, and okay. she's a really good. She's sharp on the bench. She's a good looking thing, and so I'm showing the dog second. And I'm looking over my shoulder at Booty, and I'm like, man, I hope he don't switch us around because I'm gonna have to get down to beat her. <laughs> Cliff ended up winning it, so then I was thinking in my head, I was like, man, I got to have my ducks in a row here now. Right. They showed for the males, and uh, they picked the, the best male, which was Joe Cron's dog, which I kind of figured they were. That dog's won a couple bench shows. He's a pretty good-looking dog on the table. Mm -hmm. And then it was up to me and Cliff, and, you know, when, you, when you're setting up there getting ready to win one, you know, it never really hits you until about the end. Right. So Cliff looks over at me, and, I, you know, I, I'm going to try to be the best. <laughs> I can before we show for best females I say Cliff good luck and he told me he said ain't no luck here he said you're gonna blow me out the water he said I can't beat you <sighs> so I'm still thinking in my head like all right Cliff you trying to psych me out <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> right what kind of mind game is that you just did so you know we set them up and it didn't take but about a minute or so and he picked my female and so then Joe comes up and I shake Joe's hand, and then Joe hits me with the same line. He was like, this is going to take five seconds. He said, I can't beat you. Wow. And I was like, all right, these guys are joking with me, or that she does. You know, when you, you zoned in showing your own dog, you ain't really paying attention to how good they look from the outside standpoint. Right, right. And uh, he he did. He ended up picking me, and it was kind of funny. Right there before I showed, well, I showed against Joe for the winter, I was, it kind of hit me like, all right, Colby, don't mess up. You know, you, right. you've done that. You done done this four other times with other people's dog. Don't overwork her. Don't overshow her. Just keep her the same way. Mm -hmm. And I kind of did, which I'm lucky. When when you pop her up on the table, she she kind of locks up like a statue. She don't really move no whole lot. Um, ah, so he picked. Finally, I was like, man, you know, got that monkey off my back. I finally won one on my own. Now, little did I know that weekend would go a whole lot better than I was thinking at the time. <laughs> right, right. So where did she end up finishing in the field? She ended up finishing nineteenth. She okay. she went out twenty. She went out twenty ninth. So she was kind of on the line of me showing her, but she points wise, she still could have placed. And uh, she, I'll be honest with anybody, she's a she's a one day dog in my opinion. She's not really a three day style dog. Gotcha. Uh, so when when they called her out for classiest hound. I kind of, I thought, okay, good. She didn't get scratched, you know, so she pulled, she made it. And then I went up there and she had put up a good score. It just wasn't quite enough, you right. know, and the way the scoring broke down, she was probably a crossing or two out of 10. So and I, was, what, I was, and what was her breeding again? Uh, she's a, she's a chrome and a little slipper. Okay. That's right. That's right. That's yep. right. And I bought her back last I think it was back about last October. Um, and I bought her kind of solely off of her breeding. Um, mm -hmm. I've got a male off the first cross of that, that cross, chrome and little slipper, which mm -hmm. is, you know, old school's got all the ones, uh, yep. moon, right. Heart, and, well, I got the only male out that litter. No kidding. Yep. And I, I've won some hunts with him. Um, I tell anybody, uh, that's my favorite dog I own. It's, it's hard pressed to not be one of my favorites I've ever owned. Is him? I can tell you what. <clears throat> that's you said that's out of the same litter as Pop Tart, right? Yep, yep. He's yeah. the only male. I tell you what, that, that's one of my favorite. You know, I judge a lot down there at Billy Pools, and that's one of my <laughs> favorite dogs I've ever watched run down there. Yep, I never got to watch none of them. I bought I, the male. I got. I call him Chrome too. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I bought him when he was six weeks old from Brandon. And uh, like I said, he was the only male in the bunch, and I got him. And uh, I wish I, I tell anybody, Little Slipper was one of my favorite dogs I ever watched run, the dog of Brandon. Okay. I, I give him credit 100% that Little Slipper was a 26, 27-inch jip. Just, I mean, just a bigger jip you ever laid your eyes on, and that thing could pad the grain. Uh, Whew, she was uh, – I've watched – Stuff at that lower gated creed more and you just sit back thinking how can a jip that big move like that <laughs> right <laughs> I, I, he'll, he'll tell you right now if you call wiz and ask him which what's, what's the favorite dog of yours colby or what's what dog does colby like at your horse more than any of them he's gonna tell you a little slipper slipper yeah i always love he don't keep breeding it for no reason no no he, oh he, me and him go at it all the time i tell him he's he, she's one of his best producers and he, every now and then he'd say, yeah, you might be right. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, that male, the mate I got the popcorn and pop tart and all them, that's, he's very my favorite dog I've ever owned. I ain't going to say the best, but he's just, he's been one of my favorites. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So, uh, you know, rolling into the rest of the weekend, you made you, you know, we kind of said at the beginning of the episode, you know, uh, big congratulations, you made you champion. Yep, I, I finally did it. Finally got the got the monkey off my back, and I've been close a few times. Uh, I won the speeding drive at a three day down there a couple of years ago, and my my good buddy Trevor Mills hung a hung a hunting score on me the last day and, ah. and beat me. Oh, yep. Trevor! Ever Trevor hard on them hunting scores. Man, that's kind of he picks on me all the time about that. <laughs> I tell everybody that at the time it happened, it didn't bother me a bit. You know, I was I was just so happy she'd won the speed and drive that, you know, and right. then the long went on, it started chapping me, and I was like, I was that close to winning it, and I let it slip. <laughs> well, the worst part about it, the jeep that I won the speed and drive with, exactly or well, a little over a month before that, I won the derby at the James River with this dog, and she put up hunting two days in a row. No kidding. And, and then, you know, she I, I bump her up to the all age at the North Carolina Open. She wins a speed and drive and won't put up a hunting and lose to a hunting school. I said, man, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Can't get on the right end of the stick. <laughs> no, no, it was, uh, she, she was a good dog too. I've actually got, that's the Miranda dog. I've got her bred to Chrome too now. She's, she's due with puppies in about three weeks. Okay. I got you. Yep. I got you. So how did, uh. So how did how did the how did the whole story of the of the champion be made? How was his how, how was his progression throughout all three days? So I ran four dogs at this hunt. I ran three in all age, one in the Derby. I ran three litter mates in all age off of Rooster and Sue. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's Wasp, Bumblebee, and Honey. Which Honey, going into the hunt, I knew she. I, I took her kind of for one reason. Uh, she tore something in her back leg last year. It was either an ACL or something like in her joint, in her what I call the her back knee. Mm-hmm. And um, I set her up for a long time. When when I first started them, she was the best one out of all of them. No questions asked. She was just hammered down, the best one. Right. Well, she done something to her leg, and I didn't notice it. I had hunted her a little while, and then, then I ran her one day last year, and got home and I noticed her hocking up in her in one of her legs and I went in there and was grabbing her muscle and she would just tense it up and dangle her leg and she was too good of a dog to just right get rid of yeah, yeah. and I set her up for three or four months and you know kind of I didn't I wouldn't say I babied her I just didn't run her right. and then I started easing her back into hunting easing her back into running and up to and um to about a month before the hunt there she never bothered her legs i was like all right good um but for five hours her two sisters can't touch her i, I mean she will just she will blister them and she knows she can do it them them three gyps have been in the same kennel since the day they were born right. they they sleep they it's five barrels in their pen they break gonna sleep in one barrel together every no night. kidding that close yep yeah. oh yeah then they they have been together their whole life and uh you know you can tell it, it's funny it's three sisters they're all three t totally different dogs <laughs> funny how litters you know? work out like that oh yeah honey is honey's gonna blister them for five hours she likes the front end she's gonna fly stick the front end uh bumblebee bumblebee just it, she gonna stick it she's the she's the closest thing i've had to her daddy yet 
no. as far as she'll she'll set in on a piece of game, run it, got a real good mouth, uh, moves like he does. She's pretty tough like he was. Mm-hmm. And then Wasp is – she's a funny dog to watch run. You know, it, it's almost like you can watch her. She's smiling when she's running. Right. She just right. wants to – where the action is at all times. Got the heart. You know, we, we pleasure ran at Creedmoor about a month before the hunt there. And uh, we were sitting there at Gary Odie's spot where he judges it. And we watched her come across the road. She was running by herself. She crossed, you know, then she crossed a little fold of path. She was still running by herself. Well, it hadn't been 45 seconds to a minute. Another cow slips by. She's running a gray one. A black one slips by. She comes out third with three dogs. No kidding. I was like, all right, well, then eight. She, about two minutes later, she comes back. She's first out of them three dogs. Two or, th- two or three minutes comes by. She's running a red coyote by herself. <laughs> and she just wants – and, like, you don't see her up and down the road. She don't travel. It's just no she's matter what, in, she's there. In there. And she, she looks like she's just having a ball when she's running. I love it. I love it. But so I ran them four dogs. Hunt. Um, like I said, I kind of took honey just for the first day. Hmm. And uh, first day, Wasp was second. Honey was fourth. Um, and Bumblebee was like 40th or 42nd. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, I was coming second on the singles cow cutter. I won the pairs cow cutter with them too. So, I, you know, I kind of said to myself, honey, hey, good job, baby. I understand your legs hurt, but you you, you done what you were supposed to today. Yep, that's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to leave y'all on a cliffhanger for this episode. We are going to be doing a two-part series with this good story. Uh, Colby's brought some, <laughs> just some awesome stories to the, to the table here. Uh, I love reliving this weekend with him. This is something that I wanted to try to do here a lot more is getting champions. Uh, some some of the, the guys, get some guys on here that are recent champions or uh, winners of big hunts and, and get on here and just tell the story of the weekend. I, I've really, really enjoyed recording this one with Colby and uh, I can't thank him enough for coming on and, and doing this. So y'all be sure to tune in next Wednesday. We're going to finish the story out from the Tar River Classic and then make him the champion. Then we're going to talk about his TSW rooster dog and uh, a couple of good topics. So I'm not going to spoil it all for you, but y'all be sure to tune in to get the rest of this. And I can't thank y'all enough for listening. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. And uh, like always, guys, happy hunting.